So he goes into the kitchen to get a glass of water. In the meantime, his little daughter, looked to be four years old, is playing on the floor. So I let myself in and I get on my knees and I say to her in Arabic, Shoismik, Shoismik, what is your name? So he comes back in and he's standing there listening to this. What about the one where you dressed up as a college kid? Yeah, that was so much fun. Oh my God. That was the one that I enjoyed the most. Like I say, I was younger back then. My hair had no gray in it. <laughs> I was thin. And uh, we got word that the intelligence service station chief of an enemy country was coming for his new assignment. And uh, how do you get to him, right? I mean, he's not going to be at the cocktail party sipping a martini. So uh, I had a mentor at the CIA by the name of Gus Avricatus. Gus is famous. Charlie Wilson's War. I mean, books have been written about Gus. He was like a father figure to me. He was very controversial inside and outside the agency. Killed a lot of Russians, a lot. Medals, promotions, couldn't get along with anybody. Everybody hated Gus and Gus hated everybody. But he was a sweetheart deep down. You just had to know how to deal with him. Like one time we were working in the 17 November task force together and I mentioned offhandedly that 17 November's second victim the chief of the Hellenic National Police, his name was Malios, that Malios was a torturer during the junta. And Gus grabbed me by the lapels and slammed me up against the wall. And he goes, Malios was my friend. And I said, you better get your fucking hands off of me, old man, or I'm going to make you sorry. And he finally let me go. And I go, what the fuck's wrong with you? I said, Malios was a torturer. I'm sorry if he was your friend. I'm sorry he got shot in the head but he was a torturer and keep your hands to yourself next time. And afterwards he's like, I really respect you for the way you reacted. So anyway, we were friends. So I called Gust and I said, Gust, I got a little pickle here. I said, the station chief is coming and we don't have a way to get to him. And uh, how do you think I should play this? Because I, I want to cold pitch him, even if it just means frightening him so that he goes underground. So Gus said, let me tell you something I did back in the day in the 50s. So I wish I could take credit for this, but this was not my original idea, but it worked like a charm. So on Gus's suggestion, I got a book bag and filled it with books. So it was heavy and bulky. I found the guy's address, which was not hard. And I found his car, which had a diplomatic license plate on it. So I went up to the car and with my book bag, I broke off the side view mirror. And then I picked up the mirror. I went to the next door neighbor's house, a Greek lady. And I said, is that your car, your car over there? I just broke the mirror off. No, no, she says it belongs to the guy next door. I don't know who he is. So I did that for cover reasons. So I go next door, knock on the door. The guy answers and I start speaking to him in Greek. And I knew he didn't speak Greek. And so he says in English, he says, no, no, I don't speak Greek. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. I said in English, uh, I said, you speak English. I, I'm sorry, I, I was walking down the street and I, I've got my books here and, and I, I accidentally hit your mirror and I broke it off. And the lady next door told me that it was your car. And I wanted to come and say, I was sorry, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. And, and I want to pay for it. And he's like, oh, damn it. Now I have to take it into the shop. I said, I I'm so sorry. It's, it's totally my fault. I was just being clumsy. And I'm standing there at the door. He's inside. I'm outside. But in, in Arab culture, an Arab can never turn down a request for hospitality. So I said to him, may I trouble you for a glass of water? And he's like, wait here, he says. 
So he goes into the kitchen to get a glass of water. In the meantime, his little daughter, looked to be four years old, is playing on the floor. So I let myself in and I get on my knees and I say to her in Arabic, Shoismik, Shoismik, what is your name? And she says, oh, my name is whatever. And I said, uh, how old are you? I'm four. And I said, what are you playing? In Arabic, this is all in Arabic. So he comes back in and he's standing there listening to this, which of course I did on purpose. And he says to me, what exactly do you want? So I stood up and I said, listen, I'm not going to waste your time. You're a professional. I'm a professional. This is my card with my real name. I'm from the CIA in Washington. Your guy is going down. He's going to die. You can die with him or you can be on the side of the good guys. And you have until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning to make that decision. And I walked out. And as I walked out, I said, I'll be sitting next to my phone. That's my direct line. So I went back. Everybody's like, how'd it go? I said, I don't know. We'll see. So we're all sitting there looking at our watches. The next morning, right at 10 o'clock, the phone rings. And he says, what do you propose? I said, meet me in the lobby of the Hilton Hotel in two hours and come alone and come unarmed. So we had six security guys. We were at, CIA people were at every table around. There's a little cafe in the lobby. And I wanted it to be in as public a place as possible so that if, you know, all hell were to break loose, I might have a, a little bit of safety Safety in numbers, safety in the you know public environment, cops walking around, security guards. So the guy uh, made a demand. I made a counter offer. And finally I said to him, look, you're you're not in a position of strength to negotiate here. I'm I'm telling you what it is that you're going to do. I'm not here to offer, you know, riches. We can get to that conversation at some point in the future. But right now, you have to prove your bona fides to me. And this is what you're going to do. At the end of the day, he did literally everything that we wanted him to do. We did make him rich. He survived. He's a successful businessman now, thanks to your taxpayer dollars. And we were able to shut down any threat that that embassy would have posed. And it would have posed a real threat to Americans. Wow. Yeah, that was a good one. That's a ballsy pitch, man. He was scared shitless. And like I say, he was a professional. So he knew that every one of these white guys that's sitting at every table around him is armed to the teeth and is working with me. Yeah. It's like you said before, when, when the guy on the motorcycle, when you put the gun in his face and he said, I'm not afraid of your gun. It's the same concept. You walk into his fucking house yeah. and start playing with his daughter. Yeah. He says, like, what kind of person... Yeah. I'm just going to walk in here and do like that. Like this psychopath just came into my house and now knows my child. Wow. Yeah. That's a good one, man. <laughs> What's up, guys? Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the interview. As you could probably tell, this is a brand new channel. So if you got anything out of this at all, please like the video, leave me a comment, tell me what you thought, tell me who you'd like to see on the show. Um, I see every like, I read every comment, and I appreciate all of it, especially in the beginning, because as you know, that kind of support goes a long way on these platforms. So most importantly, I have some awesome guests coming up in the future for interviews. Um, so please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of them. But again, thank you for your time. Appreciate the support and hope to see you again soon.